we're here at this disease conference, and of course we're interested in disease and how do we help laminitic horses. And we have lameness scales to help us grade laminitis, but what about sound horses and degrees of soundness? We don't have soundness scales, but all of those are all of those of us who ride know that horses have degrees of soundness. And so I've been wondering all the years since I started as a farrier and went through vet school and did some research on the foot, what does the inside of the foot look like on the super sound horse? We know that we can have disease starting and the hoof capsule still looks good. But what about a healthy foot that's extra healthy? So a horse that can do more than the average horse. Say an off-track thoroughbred that becomes a jumper and has a successful second career. An endurance horse that can do 10 or more 100 mile rides in one season for 10 years in a row. Those are super sound horses and we don't tend to study them because they're just successful and they're not having a problem. But if we could identify something in their laminar junction, something about the inside of their foot that could give us information that might help us with the diseased horses and getting back towards optimal. That could be great information and we're all here, we're just looking for pieces of the puzzle. So that's something I've been thinking a lot about, super soundness. Many disease models, and infectious disease and then and laminitis, we, we have ways of experimentally causing this. But when you read these papers, many times you'll see eight out of ten horses got the disease and so the two that didn't are considered anomalous and they're we're not studying them we're studying the disease but wouldn't it be interesting to study them what made them resistant so horses that cannot be induced by the usual dose of black walnut extract carbohydrate fructose whatever we're doing for our disease model what is it about them? And is it something in their lamini? Is it something about the inside of the foot that makes them resistant? Or is it a metabolic predisposition that makes them resistant or some combination? And there's as many variables in this concept of studying super soundness as there is in studying disease. So we're years away from answers, but it's an interesting question. And I would like to see some research effort in that direction, we, we can get laminar biopsies now, right? We know that, we can, David Hood developed this technique years ago and other people are using it. So we could in fact study these super sound horses.